Hello and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator. Thank you very much for joining me in today's video. Last time out, we started to take a look at this. This is the AV-8B Harrier 2 developed by DC Designs and available on the Just Flight website. This is a beginner level to perhaps intermediate level aircraft, not a study level aircraft, designed to get people into flying a Harrier and into flying military jets and sort of continues with DC Design's tradition of having more accessible aircraft that do not take hours and hours of study to get to grips with, rather just takes um, a little bit of reading and perhaps a keen interest in the aircraft. So last time I looked at the system specifications needed to run it, what comes with the product, the cost of it, which is a £24.99 pence. Uh, I also looked at the exterior and the interior in terms of uh, design, modelling, texturing, and just gave it an overall score. So on the outside, there were a few things that I looked at and pointed out that I hope DC Designs fix. And on the inside, things were generally much, much better. So since you're spending a lot of the time inside the cockpit as we are now I'm a little bit more uh, likely to or a little bit more on the favorable side for them in this case in this video I'm going to be going through using the checklist and going through a startup procedure we're going to taxi out we're going to do a normal takeoff we'll go fly around a little we shall perhaps do some maneuvers then we'll bring it in for either a short or or vertical landing then do another vertical takeoff perhaps hover around an airport or something like that and then bring it back down giving you a full i say as closer to a full range of what you would expect to do with this aircraft so make sure you stay tuned for all of that and then at the end i will be giving you my final thoughts on who this aircraft is for whether it is worth a purchase whether it is worth your price so make sure you stay tuned for all of that Okay, we shall begin by starting up the aircraft. We'll go through the checklist, as that is what you would normally do. If you had this aircraft, you would go through said checklist. So, before starting engine, canopy open. So for that, just click there. And the canopy is open, lovely. Uh, landing gear down, that is confirmed. So that is that switch there, or that lever. Parking brake is on. Yes, it is. That's off. That's on. You can just see that moving there. Pilot visibility is on. Now, I learned that that is this switch here. Now, I have no idea whether this switch is pilot visibility on or off, unfortunately. But there we go. I'm just going to leave it like that. It doesn't really matter. Uh, starting an engine cold. As you can see, because it's a more of a beginner level aircraft, which is supposed to be a high quality fun, but not requiring all the study, the checklists are very much simplified, but there are there are still things there that will require you to go from left to right, as you're about to see. Battery goes on. Strobe lights goes on. Now, strobe lights here actually means anti-collision lights. I'm going to switch on the auxiliary lights as well, because those are your nav lights. So those are going to go on. Fuel lever, open, push. I'm a little confused about that one, so I'm going to... I'm going to do that. Um... It just, I'm just trying to figure out why that lever is down. I thought that lever needs to be up or I think that lever, when I was doing a test flight and the aircraft was still on, I think that lever was up. So I don't know. We're going to try it anyway. Generator switch, that's up here next to the battery. That's the APU generator switch. So that goes on. APU gen goes on. Can we hear it? No. All right, that's fine. Throstle is closed. Yep, there we go. That's all the way at the bottom. Engine starter engaged. And we can hear things starting. Uh, boost pump switch, which is this one down here on the fuel pumps. Both left and right need to go on. Fuel proportion switch, that's that one there, needs to go on. And then we're looking for, on this one, we're looking for that to go well, roughly above 50%. So let's find out. So that, that, I believe there is our N2. 
that stuck at 25%. Okay, I'm going to attempt something. I'm going to pull this lever up. There it goes. Okay, I think I think that lever's in the wrong position. Now either the real Harrier is supposed to be down and they've they've got the logic on it wrong, or this this instruction is wrong. One or the other. But that's yeah. So we're waiting for that to go up to 50%. Temperatures and pressures as expected. Yep. That is a temperature. That must be a jet pipe temperature maybe I have no idea that's above 50 so we'll go ahead and switch off the APU we'll close the canopy by doing that and then we'll go ahead and switch on the JPTL is that a light by that can't be a light I have no idea what that is uh, and oxygen needs to go on which is that switch there I have no idea what to do with these switches here obviously in in the Hawk for example they do work but in this I have no idea so let's go ahead and do a taxi so let's assume we've we've got taxi clearance so we'll go ahead and do that now I'm not really going to have to worry too much about these these are just standard flights you just look at standard flight stuff uh, we'll we'll just go over to this obviously the nozzle handle as required by weights we're going to leave it there we're going to do a standard takeoff so we'll just move forward a little there we go and we're starting to move very very nice very easy to get this aircraft moving you just need a little bit of a little bit of th throttle and I believe the runway's out that way it is so what I'll do is I'll move out in that direction now at the moment the aircraft is a little too heavy for for a vertical takeoff or landing uh, just slightly so I'm going to do a normal one and then we shall fly around uh, hopefully Navigraph should be working for me it is so we we can fly around and uh, we'll probably well, apparently that I've got an old flight plan which is just sitting as a direct We'll, we'll see if we can fly around towards maybe Wales or something and perhaps yeah perhaps do something there uh, apparently where do I go okay I might be able to pull up a chart here Echo Golf is it X-Ray Charlie for where we are yes it is if I can just pull up a an airport chart that would be great there we go where am I looking okay so I need to go along there and then we'll take off along that runway fine now apparently navigation lights go on I think navigation lights should go on as soon as you, you have battery power, I'll be honest. Um, so I'm not sure if that is quite correct. But let's just go and, and do everything we need to do here. I'm going to switch on. Those are slime lights, I don't need them. I think everything else is okay there. Let's go ahead and switch on the landing lights, wherever they are. Landing lights, it's that one there. There we go. Done. I do like, uh, I will admit, when you're learning to fly an aircraft, this is really good. Uh, being able to just select things and have it highlight for you. Very, very useful. Okay, taxiing on with this aircraft, very very simple physics feel decent you can see sort of the movement of the aircraft as it slightly pitches left and right so that's that's impressive yeah I'm, I'm fairly I'm fairly pleased with with the with the way that all works so well done to well done to DC designs for that and 
let's just continue on our way. So this is these are apparently infrared sensors on the nose for this, uh, not an internal radar. The radar I think has an actual hump. Now speed, I'm trying to f see anywhere where my actual speed is displayed. I don't think there is anywhere where my speed is displayed. Now. Alright, now let's go ahead and set ourselves into a, uh, a bit of a trim, just going to adjust the trim tab a little, just so we're ready for, for a takeoff. So it says there, take off 5 degrees up, it doesn't actually highlight it, so I don't think there is a, a specific place where you can check that that elevator trim but that's okay again just showing you the movement of this at slightly higher speed I'm trying to see if there is a, a substantial amount of friction to slow this aircraft down by doing this because obviously as you're doing this you are scrubbing a little without any extra power you are you should be theoretically shedding some speed doesn't seem to. Trying to look at using the wings. Nope. Nose pitch up, pitch down. Doesn't doesn't have any impact, which is fine. So at this point, I'm going to ensure that the nozzle remains at zero. So that's that's one there. Flaps can stay at automatic for the takeoff that we're doing. So just lift them up. And let's see what we can do so if we go to this is the landing section we are perfectly perfectly fine we want the gear up before 185 knots we have a takeoff rotate rotate speed at around 135 to 160 knots we are probably going to be rotating around 140 uh, actually speed there's the speed 11 yes that is a speed I believe that must be altitude, that's speed. So let's go ahead and line up. Of course, I, I was thinking there must be somewhere that they would display the speed correctly. And we are lined up. Good to go. There we go. Now apparently the speed seems to be marking us at 2. We are not doing 2 knots, but there it's perhaps a small bug that needs to be adjusted, but we are okay. Let's go ahead and do a takeoff. Let's perform this first takeoff. Let's uh, throttle up. And let's see how this aircraft flies. Rotate, gear up, and let's reduce the throttle. Very, very smooth takeoff. I did like that. That was a really nice takeoff. And let's ease back on the power. Yeah, I did. I did like that takeoff. I'll go ahead and switch off the landing lights. As far as that is not on. Trim it down a little. Throttle back. We do not need to be going at a really high speed at the moment. Let's get this trimmed in for if possible. Three and a half thousand feet, roughly. Very, very easy to fly this aircraft. Incredibly easy. I 
even with the trim, extremely easy to fly. Uh, I am currently hands off. Yep, I, I am hands off on the flight right now. Let's go ahead and bring up the checklist and have a look at what we have. So, cruise, it says obviously 350 knots is what we want. We're doing a little slower. We're not going to be doing any autopilot procedures, anything like that. Um, again, approach, descent, approach, they're all very similar, very easy. So, what I am planning to do is if I pull up Navigraph, let's go ahead and I think perhaps, perhaps if we look at World Map, let's follow the River Trent all the way here. We'll fly straight over Birmingham. Then perhaps, if we can, we'll follow the M5? Let's try and follow the M5 down. Then maybe mess around around, Lund uh, around Wales, a little, uh, the Seven Estuary. And then deal with it from there. That looks like it, that seems like a, a reasonable thing to do. Let's uh, also have a look outside for now. It's going to be a little loud. I do apologise. I'll try and uh, I'll try and remember to drop the uh, drop the speaker or drop the sound a little, so it isn't it isn't um, too loud on the video. There's something about this aircraft that is just, it just looks so good. Something about this aircraft is just very, very nice to, to look at in general. Let's go back inside. I think the pilot is missing. Yeah, the, the pilot is definitely missing. So I believe that would be this switch if we go back outside now. There's a pilot. Although again, the pilot's not wearing his, uh, a G suit or anything, so I wouldn't. Yeah, you know, I, I wouldn't look at that pilot too closely. Not that pe personally, I'm not all too fussed with that one. But yeah, I think if we just continue along here, we should come across Nottingham Straits fairly, fairly quickly. Now, I do think these need to be improved. If if you just improve the the exterior textures, you'll be in a fairly good good place here. We are doing a very gentle climb, um, but let's let's go ahead and climb a little faster. Let's see what this aircraft is capable of. So, lift the nose, throttle up. That is now full throttle. I'm at full throttle in a 30 degree climb, 35 degree climb. Look at that climb out. That is, that is brilliant. It, it seems like it wants to start tipping over though. I have to look at the, the trim on that. But still, 25,000 feet per minute. We we'll take a very quick look outside and then we'll jump back in. That is the angle we're climbing at. That's not the button I wanted to press. I'll tell you what we could do is we could do a active pause there. Take a look outside and take a screenshot of that. Because that is a that is impressive. I 
Oh, I've gone behind. Well, actually, that's still impressive. Eventually, I'll get the shot that I want. Bear with me a second. Okay. That is one. That is one powerful climb out. Let's get back inside and prepare to really run into trouble here. Nope, we're okay. Okay, so coming in and out of, of the pause works really well. And now at 30,000 feet, so let's bring this nose down. There we go. That was, that was impressive. That was actually an impressive climb out. Very easy to fly this plane. I am, I am going to say that. There's nothing generally wrong with that. We do need to watch that temperature. That temperature there, which is also replicated just down here. 512 degrees, so you can see that there as well. So you've got both analog and digital instruments here, which is great. Let's try an altitude hold. Let's see if this works. Uh, apparently not. Come on. Nope. Doesn't want to. Doesn't want to work. Interesting. Will that stop me from pitching up and down? No. No, it doesn't. Okay, I'm not sure how the autopilot system works on this then. If that indeed is the autopilot system. Oh, there's Nottingham below us. Looking for the River Trent. I believe that must be the M1. Should have East Midlands Airports around here somewhere. Anyway, let's uh, let's keep ourselves around this sort of altitude. There we go. So we've got our G meter there. We've got uh, whatever S is. What's S? Hmm. Angle of attack. Mark indicator, G meter. Not sure what that S is going to be. 517, what does that mean? Not sure. Really not sure. Yeah, I have a feeling that uh, the airport is just below us. I'm sure if I went outside, we would see the airport. Have a quick look. There it is, right there with Donington Park racetrack. Time for another picture, I think. Okay, overall, I'm I'm thinking this is a, a decent, very decent aircraft to fly. It it does have the characteristics that it does have different characteristics to to the other aircraft that I've tried from DC Design. So clearly, it shows that they do have the various different characteristics, and it does work uh, the way we want it to work and, and the way they they are expecting it to be. Let's go ahead and do a. A bank. I believe this is the speed that you really want to be banking at for maximum maximum maneuverability. So we've got a 2.3 G turn, which honestly is not bad. Um, I've I've been in been in an aircraft that we've done up to uh, three 
just over three G's. It it does it does push you back a little, but it's honestly not a huge amount. So it, it isn't it isn't that bad. Right, we're following the A38 in. We've got some of the old. These are the old Roman roads, the A5, the A38. They're all old Roman roads that we could just follow if we wanted to. But we are not. We're we're sort of we're just going point to point. We're not using VORs or anything at the moment. Altitude is descending nicely. Uh, I am doing that intentionally. I want to bring myself gently down to 20,000 feet. I just want to see how this aircraft flies down there. I've got a little bit of juddering, but I've noticed that before. Uh, in, in I don't know whether that was in Microsoft Flight Simulator that I noticed that judgment or was it X Plane 11. I do not think it has anything to do with this aircraft. I think it's just Microsoft Flight Simulator itself. Um, so I'm not I'm not fussed about that. The people over Birmingham must be thinking, what is going on? There's, there's some aircraft uh, flying over at. Well, actually, I'm at 30,000 feet. So I've had. I think I've had an F F16 go over. Was it an F-16? Perhaps an F-18 go over at uh, 14,000 feet, and that that does tend to be loud. Let's slow ourselves down just a little. So what I will say is that I was expecting this aircraft to be a little bit more um, dynamically unstable. But this is a very stable aircraft now. I'm not sure if that is exactly as it is in real life, but as I said, this is sort of more of an introduction. It does have some of the characteristics of the Harrier, so you know, high climb rates, for example. Um, the the way it took off was very smooth. I would expect that from a Harrier. Uh, so there are there are some some things in this that it, it does have. Now, what I'm thinking of doing... So, we've already travelled from there to there in a matter of, what, 15 minutes? So, what I want to do... I believe there's an airport somewhere around here. A military airport. But I'm not entirely sure. able to switch on just give me some of the airports there's Honolulu Brecon an airport there there we go perhaps we can bring it down here right, let's go ahead and Start lifting the nose a little. Watch that climb rate change very quickly. We are now descending at what, 400 foot per minute. Lift the nose up just a little bit more. It does take a while to get the nose to respond, but overall it's all right. We'll see where we want to fly. There's plenty of places for me to to come and land uh, my aircraft. There's Bryce Norton here as well, for example. Where are we flying over now? Where are we? World map. So that's probably Eversham, 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 it could be Eversham, I don't know, I actually don't know what that one is, it could be Eversham I think, Se seems right, Eversham seems correct. So is that the river Y? Don't know, really don't know. This is fairly accurate to where we are, just looking looking at this and looking at where we are here. 
So that's fairly accurate. Quite happy about that. So I suppose that's like a, a little radar. So you can fly at night or something like that. See, we should see the M5 down this way. M50. Oh, I think the M5 is just out of view. Probably see it's ahead of us. Now, there's a 7S3. So that's somewhere where I wanted to head. So let's go ahead and uh, bank the aircraft out that way a little. There we go. So we've got uh, Cheltenham down here. No, it's not. That's not Cheltenham, is it? I've no idea of anything. Might be. There we have a famous racetrack there. So that is a. Is it Ascot? Is that what they call it? I think that's what that one is. Famous, famous race racing place. Uh, right, and then we've got the 7S3. Where's it gone? It's out there somewhere. So, let's now bring the aircraft down into a descent. So we'll, we'll drop that. Drop the speed. Drop the throttles. Start bringing the aircraft down. Now, hopefully I do have more than enough to land with. I think we should be okay for a... I think we should be okay for a landing now. For a vertical landing. I think we've probably burnt off enough fuel for that. Yep, I think we've burnt off enough fuel for that. Aircraft sheds off speed quite nicely, even though we're in a 6,000 foot per minute descent, so it is not the most aerodynamic of aircraft, as you can see. Uh, or, should I say, aerodynamic of aircraft. It's not the most uh, streamlined of aircraft. That's perfectly fine. So we're going to descend down to 10,000 feet. Let's see how steep a descent we can now do. Push the nose down. Ah, we are now picking up speed. But if I went down to idle, we'd, we'd drop speed very quickly in this aircraft. So we're still only pulling 1G, which is perfectly, perfectly fine. We're slowing down to 250 knots, as we would expect. And then, if I remember correctly, the way we have to do this is... I'll actually descend out of the clouds. The way, the way we've got to do this for a landing is we're going to do a, a break over the... We're going to do a break over the um, airfield. Whatever, whatever airports we, we decide to use. Drop ourselves down to. That could do nicely. Just, just want to be just below the clouds, I think. So we want to be around 240. Go across the airfield. Is that how we want to do that? So we'll, we'll, we'll pop in a little bit more power. Oh, that looks like a little uh, dirt track for like trial bike racing or something. It's amazing what you actually see when you are uh, when you're up above or above in the air. You, you do not see these things when you're out driving because well, you just don't see it. Ah, 350 knots, thousand feet, 350 knots. Of course, first we have to find an air airfield. Let's have a look for an airfield then. Ah, it could be Navigraph charts causing some of this problem. So, I think Bryce Norton's around here. But we, we are coming across towards... Uh, let, let's speed up a little. 
We won't go over Bristol at low altitude, that would be rude. We'll wake up all the um, residents, that would be very rude. Maximum speed on this aircraft is 0.9, Mark 0.9, which is about uh, 700 miles per hour, roughly at sea level. So that's what, 660 knots ish? Yeah, this aircraft definitely flies better at the higher speeds, I'd say. So we'll stay around this altitude. This is not an altitude you're supposed to be at. Most certainly not. We'll go fly over the bridges. Um, they should be directly ahead of us, actually. So the M4 bridge and the M the M48. There's the two bridges. So you can see it through the clouds. And then we'll we'll attempt a landing and see what we see what we have. I cannot actually see the bridges. Interesting. Oh, there, there's a bridge appearing. There's one bridge. That's the M48 bridge, I believe. Oh, is that the M48? That doesn't look like the bridge I, I'm thinking of. In fact, that doesn't look like the M48 bridge either, I'll be honest. Um, yeah, that is the M48 bridge, doesn't look like it. There's the M4 bridge. Uh, if we get out of the clouds we might be able to see it a little bit better also it doesn't look like it it's supposed to be a suspension bridge but that's ok now the people over here are probably used to military jets flying over given that we have the uh, is it Brecon over, over that side and the airport that we are looking for let's go ahead and switch into this is going to be but we'll, we'll drop it off at St. Athens, I think. Yeah, let's do St. Athens Airport. So we need to figure out what the runway heading on that is. Runways 07. Okay, great. That is important to know. And let's attempt the, the way this, this is supposed to be. I have no idea if I'm going to be able to manage this one. But we are, we are doing a, a fairly high speed. So, so the idea is we're going to fly straight over the runway at 1,000 feet. We're going to break. Uh, I'll do a break to the left over the, over the water. Come back in, slow it right the way down. Gear down, land at about 150 knots. That's the plan. Whether that works, I really do not know. That that is a, a whole different question. Whether whether that is going to work or not. Also, I just realised I don't I don't think I need to land on the one way that I think I'm going to land at. Because I think it's going to be two five that I need to land because we're going to be heading in a westerly direction. Yep, I think it's going to be 2.5. Now we could attempt to tune this in actually. Navigraph is, is the one that's causing this judder by the way, it seems. Uh, I could attempt to tune in a, an ILS for this, if possible. Way 2.5, charts, Approach. We're looking at one 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 point one five. There we go. That's on. Now, whether that's going to do what I want it to do or not, I have no clue. 
I don't know where that will show, uh, I don't know. I thought perhaps it'll show up here, but it doesn't seem to have done that. Yeah, that doesn't seem to have done anything. I've not, I've not done any of this, so that doesn't matter. Yeah, it's not, not doing what, what I wanted to do, but that's okay. The runway is, should be right near, there it is. You can just see it, right there. So we're going to attempt this. Three, three fifty-ish knots, thousand feet. Of course, I'm. I don't need to do that because I'm bringing this in for a, a vertical landing. Just remembered. So let's start slowing it down now and start preparing for a vertical landing. Yes, yes I did. I did just forget that we're doing that. Segment screenshots here though. This is nice. I think I'm going to just do another pause break here because um, use active pause. This is actually another fairly nice area to take a, take a photo. This is, this is actually very nice. Uh, do I want to zoom in a little more or zoom in less? I think zoom in less. Move a little closer. That might give me a better shot. Yeah, I think that, that's a fairly decent picture of me trying to attempt to come to land. There we go. Okay, so, preparing myself for landing, we are going to rapidly slow this aircraft down. Yep, rapidly slow it down. So we want to hold around, let's, let's hold around 180 knots for landing. We're not going to do a break here, despite what, what I was originally planning to do. That looks fine. Um, once we get below 180 knots, actually, I'm going to. In fact, I'm going to drop flaps ready for ready for that landing. Because remember, for a vertical landing, we have to essentially slow down to zero. That's that's an important part of this. So instead of landing at 160 or whatever we're going to land at, we're landing at near zero. So. One of the key things is going to be that we do not switch the nozzles to 90 degrees straight away. We do it slowly. And I think we should start pulling the flaps out because we are going to start losing lift very shortly. So flaps are coming down into... That's coming down into... Um, the vertical landing mode. Gear is now coming down. Do we get an increase in drag? Potentially. Start slowing down further. And at this point, we need to start. We need to start pitching the nose up and start switching the nozzle. So the nozzle is now moving into a different position we're going to have to tilt the nose up because we are going to start losing lift and as we do that we have to increase the power so as you can see we are now coming in at 100 this is well below the stall speed of this aircraft now this aircraft cannot fly at this speed as you can see this is this is well below that stall speed. We're at 45 degrees. Lift the nose up. We are slowing down. We are slowing down. We are now rapidly slowing down. There we go.
we're now moving into near vertical flight pull that nose back we are now at 50 knots we are now at 90 degrees on the nose 21 knots look at that just adjust the throttle slightly and we have just landed or we are just about to land a harrier nice gentle touchdown incoming no do not climb we want a nice gentle touchdown and we are down There we go. We've just brought a Harrier down from whatever, wherever we were. Now, admittedly, it's not directly in the center of the runway, but you have to admit that was pretty cool. And as you can see, these, uh, if I go to an external, just an external camera, and show you, you can see the flaps are out to that setting, the vertical takeoff and landing setting, and these were all the way down there. So there's one, two, and there's another two, one there, and one there. So let's go ahead and uh, let's do a, let me show you from this angle, let's do a takeoff in a vertical mode. So we'll, we'll do a VTOL takeoff right now. So you can just about see the, the nose lifting. See that nose lift? So we have the thrust coming up. All the way. And we are off the ground. There we are. Now, admittedly, I'm, I'm drifting a little because of where I'm flying, but we could actually maneuver this. I, I could actually fly this aircraft around at this height. In fact, let's go ahead and do that. Let's see. Let's see if it's possible to, to hover the aircraft around at this sort of height. So we'll we'll pitch the nose forward. Come on. Oh. Or not. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. There we go. We'll give it give it some forward movement. There we go. And the theory is we should be able to just fly it around at this height. So what are we at? 180 feet, 200 feet? Now that's pretty different for, for an aircraft. And I think DC Designs have done a good job getting a, getting a jump jet to, to this actual um, simulator. So again, for that, I've got to give them a... I, I do have to give them props, but this, this is cool. This, this is actually quite cool to, to do. So I'm now flying this around like a helicopter, although unlike the, the video where I was flying a helicopter, this is actually somewhat easier. So can I, can I bank this aircraft? That's the question. Will it, will it bank? No, it doesn't bank. So it just, it just drifts. So all you've got to do is that. 
There you go. Now, if anybody has watched uh, an old film called, I think it's True Lies, I've seen the clip of this, um, it's got Arnie in it, and uh, he, he flies a, a Harrier like this up to a building, and it's, it's quite impressive. Obviously, it's visual effects, but still. Like, this is cool. Th this is actually cool. I'm flying a, a Harrier jump jet at 200 feet above the ground, at eight knots. Eight knots is what I'm flying that at. I mean, just, just look at that. That's ridiculous. But that is absolutely ridiculous. I, I could even pull the gear up, and there you go. It just looks insane that the, the speed that I'm flying this aircraft at. And of course that's something that the Harrier was is known for. So I think I'm going to I'm going to leave it there. Um, what I did need to do is give you a, a final thoughts, don't I? So my final thoughts on this aircraft. Um, who is it for? I think for those people who just want to mess around with an aircraft, uh, if you if you want to mess around with a different kind of aircraft, then this is something you could get. Of course, as I have pointed out before, there are some some bugs with the aircraft that they need to fix. And once they fix them, I think this aircraft will be a lot nicer. And so I do I do look forward to them potentially fixing fixing those bugs. Um, if you want to, as I said, mess around with different types of aircraft and, and experience a jump jet, doing this for example, then this is this is an aircraft for you. Otherwise, if you are somebody who is new to flight simulator and doesn't want to have too much too much effort, doesn't want to put in too much effort to read hundreds of pages on, on a study level aircraft and just wants to enjoy uh, a simple aircraft or a simple aircraft, a fancy aircraft, but in a in a more simple fashion, then this aircraft is also something that you could you could fly. If you are looking for an extremely detailed study level aircraft, this is not the one. Unfortunately, I would say this is this is not the aircraft you want. Um, it does not have the study level. It, it it isn't a study level aircraft, and and they do say that it is not a study level aircraft. So if you do pick this up, do not expect uh, a study level aircraft uh, over for for what you're going to get. So just just bear that in mind. Um, overall, I'll give this aircraft for what it is. Again, I still stick by the exterior needing work and currently being what was it, a 6 out of 10 I gave it for for the um, texturing and a 7 out of 10 for modelling I think it does need some work there fix that and your DC designs will have a really good aircraft here interior it's pretty good it is pretty good I think the checklist perhaps needs a, a little bit of work unless I misread it in which case I do apologise um, apart from that, it, it does fly. You don't need to tell me altitude, I'm okay. Apart from that, it, it does fly. It, it, it does fly, and it flies really, really well. I do like the HUD. Uh, I do like the way everything is. I, I really like these displays. I think they're, they're very cleverly done and uh, very authentic. So I'm quite pleased with, with that. Overall, this aircraft, I'll give it a... A seven? Should I give it a seven out of ten for what it is? I think a seven out of ten, seven and a half out of ten for what it is. Uh, once they improve a few things, a few textures here and there, clean up the checklists, uh, things like that, it could be an eight out of ten for what the aircraft is. So overall, they've done really well. Again, not a study level aircraft, so do not purchase this if you're looking for a study level aircraft. You will be disappointed, but. If you are just looking for well, just a bit of enjoyment like this, then then yes. And watch this as, as I now take off.
Now I'm now going to move into into uh, normal flights. There you go, wings have caught. And off I go. Like that is pretty cool. There we go. I'm now on my way once again. So, again, for things like that, for novelty factor, this aircraft is, uh, yeah, for novelty, this this aircraft is is really cool. It's a very very cool aircraft to fly. Um, obviously, if you're if you're British and you really like the Harriers, this is again, an, uh, it's a it's a really cool aircraft, a really really cool aircraft. It flies decently well as you can see um, it, it does maneuver it does maneuver as you would expect it to maneuver so yes seven and a half out of ten that is my final rating if you want to pick this aircraft up there is a link in the description box right at the top for the uh, for this product directly on the just flight webpage uh, thank you to just flight for supplying this product and hopefully that was a very fair review thank you very much for watching please remember to hit the like button if you like this video subscribe to the channel for more videos on Microsoft Flight Simulator leave a comment in the comments box below let me know what you think have you ever seen a Harrier fly in real life I certainly think that these are some of the best aircraft that were ever made but then again that might just be because it's a jump jet and I think jump jets are rather cool if you can do so, please do consider supporting me on Patreon. Link in the description box below. And also, you can find me on social media at ECGadgetsLP for Instagram and still for the moment Twitter. Lastly, there is a. What? What? Uh, lastly, there is a link to my Discord server uh, in the description box as well. Please feel free to join and help me build up a small community. That is all from me. And I shall leave you with. Well, this is a pretty nice, uh, pretty nice view actually. I'll take a screenshot of that. But I shall leave you with uh, with your thoughts. I'll see you next time.